Russia is on the decline, in virtually every way. Their military spending has been trending downward, down more than 25% since 2013. Their entire economy is slowing down, with growth rate also trending downward, from a high of 8.5% in 2007 to just 1.3% in 2019. In fact, their entire population is beginning to shrink. They have one of the lowest fertility rates in the whole world, and nearly the oldest population age in all of Europe. In fact, the UN projects Russia's population to lose almost 20 million people in the next 75 years. On top of this, Russian arms exports have been decreasing as China slowly takes over more and more of their market share. And all this undoubtedly has a serious impact on Russia's military and their position in the world. It seems to be painting a pretty bleak outlook for Russia's military future. So are they becoming irrelevant? Do they no longer need to be viewed as a major potential adversary for the US? But first, our sponsor. NordVPN has been an amazing supporter of the channel. They have an amazing product that works consistently. The question is, why even get a VPN? It is to ensure that your data is kept safe and private while browsing. Almost everyone buys something they need or want online. E-commerce has just exploded over the past few years, and the motivation to steal personal information has grown right along there with it. NordVPN encrypts your data to ensure that no hackers can snoop on you. Stealing your information is a lot easier than you think, and they have you covered with over 5,400 servers in 59 different countries, double data encryption, up to six simultaneous connections from six different devices, and much more. So go and use my link in the description. With it, you get a huge discount plus an additional month for free. Go to nordvpn.com covert and use our coupon code covert at checkout. So try them out, and if you don't like them, they have a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to you. Again, NordVPN. Shortly after the collapse of the Soviet Union, Russia was in real rough shape. They inherited a massive military with no money to pay for it. It was so bad that the US was terrified nuclear weapon facilities would be left unguarded, as those guards weren't being paid. The US spent millions and millions of dollars helping Russia pay salaries for security and install security cameras and monitoring systems to help protect nuclear materials from being stolen. The US was also worried about highly skilled Soviet rocket scientists and engineers leaving and working for the highest bidder, either small countries the US considered hostile, like North Korea or Iran, or even for terrorist groups. This was actually part of the reason for Russia and the US working together on the International Space Station. The US wanted to make sure that they kept those scientists busy and employed, so they funded a lot of Russia's space program in the 1990s. The collapse of the ruble in 1998 made matters even worse for Russia. Military spending hit the lowest level in modern Russian history. There was no money to maintain ships, so they were left rusting in port. Aircraft sat in hangars, wasting away. Tanks, vehicles, everything suffered. This had a long-term effect, not only on the hardware deteriorating, but also on personnel experience and training. And this partly enabled Vladimir Putin's rise to power. President Yeltsin suddenly and unexpectedly resigned at the end of 1999, and Putin took over for him. And regardless of what you may think of him, Things improved drastically for Russia during those first two terms. Economic growth went from negative 5% to a 10% positive rate in two years, and it held pretty steadily high. With it, military spending skyrocketed as well, from just under $8 billion a year when he took office, to over $50 billion a year when leaving in 2008. This period of growth enabled Russia to begin modernizing their military. In 2011, a massive rearmament program was launched for the Russian Navy with the stated goal of procuring 100 new warships in the next 10 years. We've seen brand new submarines like the Bore class, finished design, construction, and interoperational service. They built dozens and dozens of new corvettes and frigates, and they just began construction on two massive amphibious assault ships, Project 23900. They were able to finance and build their first stealth fighter, the Su-57, along with other advanced fighters like the Su-35 and MiG-35 design new ground vehicles and tanks like the T-14 Armada, along with a whole host of new weapons like hypersonic missiles. With this growth, Russia became much more active internationally, with the seizing of Crimea in 2014 and getting actively involved in Syria, and building up a massive permanent air base there. The late 2000s up till recently has seen a massive boost to Russia's power in the world, turning them from a weak regional power on the edge of collapse into a formidable, yet smaller, superpower. But things aren't looking good for Russia in the future. Their decreasing economic growth, resulting in decreasing military spending, their stalled out population growth that's soon to be shrinking, and the rise of China are all having an impact. Allies of the US always do, and will likely always continue to buy their military hardware from the US. Countries that don't like the US, on the other hand, have often bought from Russia. 
These military exports enabled Russia's defense industry to continue funding Russia's own military, as the cost of developing new hardware could be offset by more sales. It's been one of Russia's main industries that kept their military afloat throughout the 90s. They benefited greatly from the massive investments made during the Soviet era, retaining a lot of knowledge and experience that was passed down through the years. Even today, Russia is the second largest exporter of weapons in the world, behind only the US. But that also has been decreasing. In the last five years alone, it's decreased by nearly 25%. There are a few reasons for this decline. One big one is India. India has been one of the largest and longest buyers of Russian military gear, dating all the way back to the 1960s. Even today, about 75% of India's Navy and Air Force is made up of Russian hardware. But this is changing as India is now also growing and expanding their own defense industry. As a result, Russian exports to India have decreased over 50% in the last few years. China is another big issue, and likely to become even more damaging to Russia as time goes on. Chinese exports have been increasing, and show no signs of slowing, and it's taking a bite directly out of Russia's sales. In another decade or so, it's likely China will surpass Russia in arms exports, hurting them even further. And Russia is going to have a tough time maintaining their defense industry with less sales internationally. And now they are reportedly even completely merging Sukhoi and Mikoyan. The two companies actually merged back in 2006, but maintained separate design, research, and production facilities. But now they are consolidating all those together. This appears to be an attempt to combine efforts to focus on reducing costs and to create a more capable and appealing aircraft for both the domestic and export market. However, it'll likely come with the loss of variety and numbers of aircraft they can actually produce. So, taking all this into account, things don't look good for Russia in the near future. On top of that, all those new ships and aircraft they've been buying come with high maintenance costs that continue throughout the life of them. The initial development and construction costs are one thing, but the day in, day out care and maintenance required isn't cheap. It's an ongoing cost every year, which further eats into their decreasing budget. But any nation with thousands of nuclear bombs will never be fully irrelevant. They might not be a global superpower, but they will likely always be a strong regional power in Europe. And with China becoming more of a concern of the US in the Pacific, Russia doesn't necessarily have to focus there as much as the Soviet Union did during the Cold War and could instead put more emphasis on Europe and the Middle East. And finally, things could change for Russia. We've seen it before. In the 1990s, Russia was in serious trouble and was virtually of zero concern to the US and the West. But that obviously changed drastically over the next 20 years, with talk of Russian foreign policy, cybersecurity, and their military absolutely dominating talk in the US and European media. So who knows, things could change again. But all indications don't look good right now. As with everything, we'll have to wait and see. And sorry for missing at the last video, I had to fix the map. So we have to find the Jersh in Vienna, One Own Man in Varna, Ryan P in Detroit, FST 988 in London, and this person in Taipei. <laughs>